shadows in the light of you When I found the joy of reaching your heart When my will becomes enthroned in your love When all things that surround become shadows in the light Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The reason we live is to worship Him. The reason we live is to love Him. Go ahead and, and just love Jesus this morning. Tell Him that you love Him. Tell Him the reason you live is to worship Him. Tell Him that you are created for His glory. You are created for His worship. You are created to honor Him. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and thank him for, for his kindness. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his goodness towards us. Thank him for a good night rest. Thank you for the previous day's accomplishments and achievements. We give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and thank him. Jesus will thank you. We'll give you praise. You are good to us. Always good to us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your preservation. Thank him for his kindness. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his choosing to honor us by making, accepting us in the beloved. We give you praise. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I want you to commit this time into his hands and ask him that you want him to speak to you this time. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you want him to speak to you. You want him to breathe on you. These few minutes we are going to spend together in his presence. The, uh, tell him that your heart is open. Your ears are open to receive, especially from him today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And the people said, Amen. Okay, you're welcome. It's, um, it's another uh, confirmed devotion. And we just thank him for his faithfulness. All right. Um, today, we are still looking at conform. How that we have been called to conform to the image of his dear son. We have been looking at the things we need to do in order to conform. The things we need to do in order to conform. I would like for us to read this morning. Uh, do not forget as we are, as we are uh, sharing this morning. I want you can be praying quietly. Uh, you know, under your breath, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, as you listen to the word, it opens up your spirit to receive more and more. Okay, so we are going to read from Isaiah chapter fifty-five. From verse 8 till 11, thereabout. Okay, for my thoughts. Uh, no, let's start from verse 7. He said, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abandon abundantly pardon. He said, why is God saying that the unrighteous man should forsake his way and his thoughts and return to him? He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts and then verse 10 says for as the rain cometh down the snow from heaven and returneth not tither but watereth the head and makes it bring forth and bore that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth out of your mouth my mouth sorry it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing where to i sent it and then verse 12 says for you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands for your sake praise god life becomes easy when the word of god has been enthroned in our hearts life becomes easy i like that verse 12 you shall go out with joy when you are in the place where the word of god is um, has taken center stage in your life uh, all that there is left to do is that you'll be going out with joy you'll be led forth with peace the mountains and the hills mountains and hills talks about obstacles things that should have otherwise stopped you bible says they shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field that's the elements and the people that you meet bible says they shall clap their hands for your sake verse 13 says instead of thorns shall come up the fair tree and instead of brass shall come up the mighty tree and it shall be to the lord for a name glory to god I, I, I prophesy that to somebody's life this morning in the name of Jesus. I see uh, 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 fair trees coming up instead of thorns in the name of Jesus. I see life become more, more and more easy for you. I see comfort surround you more and more in the name of Jesus. But before you get to that, Bible says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of, your, out of my mouth. It, it, those things are able to happen when the word of God has been enthroned when the the authority of the word is recognized when the word has been submitted when the word has taken center stage in that in that life praise god but the reason i read this this morning is uh god starts from let the wicked for and the unrighteous forsake his ways and his thoughts uh, and god explains for himself for your their thoughts are not his thoughts and their ways are not his ways he said for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts and my ways higher than your ways so god's thoughts and consequently his ways his uh, approach to life his results to life are superior to ours they are superior to us so god god starts talking about um transformation Okay, and he says the reason he wants them to be transformed is because their thoughts are different from his thoughts and his ways are different from their ways. Uh, and then he ends up by saying, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, so shall my word be. Praise God. So he, God is connecting the change that he wants to happen to his word. God is connecting the change that he wants to happen to his word there is no change for us outside of the word of god we cannot change outside of the word of god we cannot change outside of the word of god so the word of god is very critical if we must change if we must keep conforming uh, to the image of the of god's dear son if we, if we must keep transforming till we become conformable or till we are conforming to the image of his dear son we must give the word its place in our lives praise god i mean there is no two ways about it there's no two ways about it no two ways about it okay uh, praise god uh, it's so important that we humble ourselves and give the word its place in our lives praise god in james uh, james chapter 1 verse uh, uh, 21 he, he, he said wherefore lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our souls or which is able to save your souls wherefore laying aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness bible says that we should receive with meekness we need a whole lot of meekness to receive god's word 
Okay, we, we need to humble ourselves. Stop arguing with the word of God. Stop contesting the word of God. And just receive the word of God for what it is. The word of God is the most outstanding authority. Is the most supreme authority on planet Earth. Praise God. Let me read a couple of translations from that uh, James 1.21. Okay. Um, Uh, the Bible in basic English. It said, for this reason, putting away all dirty behavior and the overweight of evil, take into your souls without pride the word which being planted there is able to give you salvation. Take into your souls without pride the word into which being planted there is able to give you salvation. So we need to humble ourselves. We need to stop contesting with the word of God. We need to um, stop thinking that we can be wiser than the word of God. We need to stop thinking that paradventure, maybe God doesn't know what he's saying, or maybe um, God is wrong, or maybe uh, God's word has become too a cake for this generation. We need to stop thinking like that. We need to stop thinking like that. God's word God's wisdom will always be superior to the wisdom of men. It doesn't matter how aristocratic that person is. It doesn't matter how civilized and how sophisticated our civilization becomes. The word of God will always be supreme in intelligence, in wisdom, in authenticity than the word of man. Okay, so we need to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to the word of God. That is what will help us to continually, okay, um, uh, renew our minds uh, on the pathway towards transformation and then conformation to the image of God. Another tool we need is um, 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 the tool of prayer. I introduced that uh, yesterday, the tool of prayer, the tool of prayer, very important. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, Paul talks about uh, his little children, the Galatians, whom he he said, my little children, whom whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed on your inside. And we said yesterday that uh, uh, being conformed to the image of Christ answers to praying. Okay, Bible says, whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed on your inside. Prayer helps Christ to be formed on our inside. Prayer helps Christ to be formed on our inside. Prayer helps Christ to be formed on our inside. Prayer is powerful. You recall in Luke chapter 9, Jesus was praying at some point. And Bible says, as he prayed, the form of his countenance was transfigured. Is the form of his countenance was transfigured. The Bible says, and his raiment shone in such a way that no dry cleaner on earth should could wash it. Okay, so when we spend time at the place of praying, it helps our it helps our transformation. It it expedites transformation. If you see a child of God who is open to the word of God and also involved with praying. Is growing and praying, his growth, his transformation, his conformation is faster. Because when we pray, the presence of God, we collide with the presence of God. When we are at the place of prayer, we encounter the power and the presence of God. We encounter the finger of God and, and that presence um it softens our spirit it prepares our heart for the word of god to take root inside it glory to jesus prayer softens the ground of our hearts so that the word of god will be able the word of god which is the seed that was planted in mark chapter 4 will be able to take place in our in uh, uh, take root in our lives praying Praying is very important, especially when you take time to pray in the spirit a lot. Okay? You pray in your understanding, but you take time to pray in your spirit a lot. When you do that, the the, the heart, the ground of your heart is soft for the word of God to be planted. 
Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So praying is very important. Praying is very important. You remember that when Moses uh, spent 40 days in the presence of God, the Bible says he came back and his face, his face was shining. The presence of God had rubbed off on, on him. Glory to God. So when we take time to pray, our our heart is softened to receive the word of God. When somebody keeps exposing to the word of God and is not praying enough, his heart is not as soft as it should be towards the word of God. But when you take time to pray, especially praying in tongues, especially praying in tongues, either before you go for a fellowship or before you read your Bible or after you read your Bible, it helps to prepare your heart. I said yesterday that uh, there's something called praying the word into your spirit. When you pray, the word is able to be sown. It's able to take root in your heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then, uh, um, okay, Uh, another thing we will need is is the ministration or the 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 help of the holy spirit this is how i will this is how i will actually de- 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 describe what i'm saying this morning before wood can be turned into a piece of furniture three factors must be in place before any piece of wood can be turned into a furniture three factors must be in place there must be the factory where you have all the machineries that's the carpenter's shed must be there the carpenter's shed must be there there must be the carpenter must be there present and then there must be tools in that shed which the carpenter will use on the wood to turn it into furniture glory to god the carpenter there is the holy spirit the tool is the word of god and the factory there is the place of prayer i'll say it again the Carpenter there is the Holy Spirit. The tool is the Word of God. And the factory, the environment where you have all the machineries, where that transformation takes place, is the place of prayer. So, uh, uh, we've been talking about the the power of the Word uh, to change us. We have also talked about the power of praying to change us. Now, quickly, for a few minutes, I just want to talk about the, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit uh, in 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 our achieving a change glory to god i will read from second corinthians the book of second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but with all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord Remember I said yesterday or day before yesterday that the, the mirror there or the glass there is the word of God. Uh, okay, so he said we are with open face, beholding us in a mirror, the word of God. The glory of the Lord are being changed or are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. We are with open face, beholding us in a mirror. We are beholding the word of God and we are being changed into the same image that we are beholding from glory to glory. And who is doing it? The Holy Spirit, even as by the Holy Spirit. Okay, Uh, so um, baptism with the Holy Spirit is very key in transformation. Being filled always with the Holy Spirit is very key in transformation. Being um, uh, engaging the Holy Spirit, uh, being involved with the Holy Spirit, having an active relationship with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues always, being continually full. Every time you are baptized afresh with the Holy Spirit, it helps transformation. It helps transformation. Okay, so do not go for uh, don't go a day without being uh, asking the holy spirit to fill you afresh okay Uh, the more you are filled the more your transformation takes place the more you are able to live up to the word of god the more like i said earlier the word of god will take root in your heart and then it will bring forth in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we need the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is the spirit of change. He is the spirit of change. You remember First Samuel chapter 10 when Samuel prophesied to Saul 
that um, when you live here, you meet three men, and then they will be prophesying, and the Spirit of God will come upon you, and you are going to prophesy with them. The Bible says, and as he left Samuel, it happened exactly like that. And the Bible says he was turned into another man. And uh, the Spirit of God came upon him, and he was turned into another man. I see you being turned into another man. I see you overcome struggling in the name of Jesus. Somebody, oh, many years now you have been in the faith, you are always struggling, having issues with aligning with the word of God. We are receiving the word of God with meekness. I, I, we come against that hardness of heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. I, I receive baptism of the Holy Ghost. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, all the disciples, uh, when Jesus uh, arose just before he died, Bible says he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. And then in Acts chapter 2, while in hiding, being timid and cowering away and hiding away, Bible says the, the Spirit of God came upon them and they received boldness. It was after that time, the Bible says they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. They took knowledge that they, even though these guys were unlearned, but when they saw their boldness, they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I see you conforming more and more in character, in courage, in behavior, in boldness, in anointing, in grace. I see you conforming more and more in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just place your heart on, hands on your heart this morning as we pray in the Spirit. Go ahead and pray in the Spirit. This morning, I want us to ask for fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Okay, lay your hands on your on your head, rather, on your head. Lagro to Banagash Sata. And ask the Spirit of God to baptize you afresh. Ask Him to baptize you afresh. Holy Spirit, baptize me afresh. Come afresh into my heart. Come afresh into my life. Fill me afresh with your presence and with your power and with your glory. In the name of Jesus. So brethren Sata. Young Ladasa del Halo, Ons de Zegele Heste, Coloro Steze, Lagro do Padasi Coloro Sana, Ande Gigoloro Sadavre to no Site, Egle Toloro Bodo Sete. Go ahead and pray in tongues. Manglo to Seti Zinehano, Ogle de Dizoko Coloro Bodo Staza, Logro to Manasite Le Rebodo Stere Bodo Sete. We receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. So bread in the heart, lo croto balaraga da belerebe de sete, la croto polorobo do chandele rebo do se, ye ke le rebo do se, le rebo do se. Receive fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. We we'll breathe the Holy Spirit afresh upon you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ma colorobo do balaracata, jengle torobo do sete, igla to logo borobo do sete, ye crato lorobo do sete. In the name of Jesus, so bread in the heart, somebody is being anointed with fresh courage to witness, fresh boldness to stand up for Jesus, fresh boldness to identify with, with the Christ and, and his church and the people of God in the name of Jesus. As the Spirit of God baptizes you afresh, you are baptized afresh with affinity to pray. Affinity for the presence of God. Affinity for the word of God. Affinity for studying, for meditating on the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Ye krato lo robodo sande lo robodo shte. La groto patale robodo sata. Thank you, Father. Le krodo mana haste. Go ahead in a moment of time and begin to declare that concerning this weekend, I declare that the will of God is done in my life and in ministry, in my ministry, in my life, in my family, in my ministry. Tell Jesus, I receive your all, your will to be done. I receive your will to be done. I ask that your will be done. I demand that your will be done. 
In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rakatogo Lorogo do Boshtala, Zekre Telerebodo. Let the will of God be done. Jesus, have your way. Jesus, have your way. I live for you and live for you alone. This weekend, in the name of Jesus, my life will glorify you. My life must glorify you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the people said, Amen. Okay, God bless you. Do not forget to share this with as many uh, as as you, you as God gives you grace to do that. Share it. These are real powerful sessions, and uh, I'm, I keep hearing testimonies uh, concerning them. Praise God. Okay, um, till uh, uh, enjoy your weekend, and then make sure you 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 are uh, with you hook up with us on the Sunday service, and then Monday morning we'll be back for. Uh, Confirm devotional. God bless you. Bye-bye.